a lot of people are worried about Japan going woke. We've seen a rise in things like anime translations, there's particular legislation in the uh, Japanese parliament, and other concerns that Japanese society, and really Asia in general, may go woke and go broke just like the West. I mean, the reason why I say, hey, let's move from the West to the East is not just because the women are beautiful, not just because the food is delicious, but it's because you can escape this part of Western culture. Woke is something that certainly more and more people want to get away from, they want to stay away from. And today we're going to talk about some reasons why Japan will not go woke and why it will not catch on in the same way it catches on in America. As always, I am Andrew Esquire, an American attorney who is abroad currently in Bangkok, Thailand, but also in Seoul, in Japan, whether it's Tokyo, Osaka, or anywhere you guys want to be over here in Asia. And of course, this is Go East Gentlemen, where we help gentlemen move from the West to the East. So let's just get right into it. So I know a lot of people have been writing me lately, particularly as Rahm Emanuel, the ambassador to Japan, obviously former ad de camp of Obama and the Obama administration, very much known as a democratic agenda pusher, somebody who forces things through. When you want something done, you send Rahm Emanuel. And the fact that he is trying to force through the Japanese parliament, this legislation regarding LGBTQA++ XYZ during prior month. Yeah, that is certainly no coincidence. And people are concerned about that. They think that ESG is going to take over Japan. They think that uh, Japan is going to go down this road and it's going to be kind of this last bastion that falls. Many people have turned to anime. They've turned to non-traditional media in order to satisfy their craze, their craving really, not, not craze, but craving because people want good stories and they're having to look outside of the West. So I was reading a good, a good friend of mine sent me an article, my friend Max Mura sent me an article by Robert Whiting, who's been in Japan for a very long time. He actually got in fairly well with the uh, Yakuza over there in Japan. He wrote a good article, Little Chance the Woke Movement Happens in Japan. Now this is behind his Substack paywall. But I did have a chance to check it out and read it. And I want to say where I concur with Rob Whiting on these three points and some of the points that he makes in this article. First of all, we have to understand that woke is really something that's inherently born out of the West. And this is, I think, the first point is we have to understand that it's really something that comes from the mentality of the West in terms of this, you know, kind of racial identity, kind of going back to the sins of the West. So trying to impose that upon the East, trying to impose it on countries that really, number one, do not have large populations like that. There really isn't a huge population for wokeism to take hold of in Japan or Korea or Southeast Asia, the Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia. They don't have these groups for it to latch onto. And certainly the way that the West tries to push it and the way they push it in English is not going to work when you translate it over into these other countries. Now, certainly these other countries have had experiences with socialism because, by the way, woke is a form of socialism. It is a tied in deeply with the socialist movement, the members of BLM, which are intrinsically tied to woke and what is woke. These folks are open socialists, open Marxist communists, and that's what they would like to advance. So certainly these countries have their forms of socialism, but they've also thoroughly fought against that, debunk those and put those down in their relative nations. So I think most nations by now, particularly in Asia, have already come out to how they've liked to deal with socialism. Either they are socialist countries, such as many in Southeast Asia. So we'll talk about Vietnam, for example, socialist country, China, lots of issues there over in the CCP, which is a whole separate video. So you've either adopted it or you've thoroughly put it down. It's something that you have addressed and you've dealt with. So it's handled one way or another. Now, I will say socialism is creeping more into the politics within democracies. So democracies are drifting more and more and more left. That's true, but that's the way they've kind of, in, a, in almost a fashion, incorporated socialism. So that's kind of how it's been dealt with in the East differently than the West. Now, going forward from that, part of wokeism is sort of this call out culture and kind of just kind of stand out to make a scene, to do the Colin Kaepernick. And one good thing that Robert Whiting points out, and he is an expert on 
Japanese baseball, which if you guys don't know Japan, baseball is almost as big in Japan as, as really all the collective sports in America. It kind of has the same attention as soccer would have in other countries where the nation's really focused on the sport. So in these sports, particularly in Japan, standing out being the Colin Kaepernick is absolutely what you do not do. You do not want to be the one who is the one who's going against the team, who's going against the general spirit, who's creating an issue. That's not a thing in Japanese sports. That goes against the wa, you know, this concept of wa, which Rob Whiting talks about very much in one of his books. So it's not in the Japanese way for the act, for whether it's actors or sports people or anyone else to go and stand out and to make themselves that person who's kind of doing it differently. Yes, occasionally there will be the odd duck, but as a general rule, it's not something that's going to happen in Japanese culture. And I think last but really not least is that companies and other, whether it's companies, teams, everything else, large organizations, they do not want to do what Bud Light, Miller Light, Target, all these other companies ended up doing and being punished for in the United States. Number one, and this is a big thing about Asia, not just Japan in general, yeah, they care about making money. And it is a very much cardinal rule not to talk about politics, religion, or controversial events as a company. This is something that, as a general rule, does not happen with people within companies, teams, actors, actresses. They just don't mention it. They just don't talk about the controversial issues. You're allowed to have your own beliefs, to vote the way you vote, but you don't put it out there as a corporate statement, like Disney does, saying, hey, we support the transing of children. That's not something that companies feel comfortable talking about in Japan. It's just something they don't do. It's against their culture. And I think when you have a country that is majority over 90% of that particular culture, that particular nationality, that particular background, set of beliefs, Japan and Korea being essentially ethno states where they've done a job, and you can say whether it's a good job or bad job, let you let the results speak for themselves, of keeping the culture relatively homogenous and therefore more resistant towards things like woke that come in as a Western thing trying to penetrate the society. I just do not think as a cultural thing, woke will stick. I think at, at best, it will be a very, very fringe thing, which is more of a platitude, right? Much like due process. If you guys don't know about due process in Japan, yes, on paper, you have the right to a speedy trial. However, people can often be detained for a quite long period of time before they see a trial. So this is something that, hey, yeah, you know, on paper, we've got this, but we're going to do it our way, right? So you guys have to understand that sometimes these things are, you know, on paper, you might see some sort of legislation get passed or something else woke get passed. But as a day to day thing, I do not think this is going to radically change Japanese culture. I do not think that Japanese culture is going to become suddenly woke. And I'm glad that I saw Bob Whiting agree with me. Now, if you guys disagree with me, make sure you write it in the comments. And whether you like this or don't like this, I hope you enjoy that we're engaging in conversations like this about countries and about what their future is, where they're going to go. And if you'd like to smash a like button and ding the notification bell, smash the subscribe, that would really help us out as we push towards 3,000. Thank you so much for making 2,500 happen. Till next time, peace.